Quintessential Quintuplets was a very good manga. Many even considered it to be the best harem manga in circulation for a good majority of its run. Not that there was that much competition in the first place. And people thought that for a very good reason. You see, it's very rare that you get a harem manga with as much heart put into it as Quintessential Quintuplets. Usually, harem manga stick to a lighter, more comedic tone, and never really develop the girls outside of, say, a little bit of backstory and the reason behind why they love the MC. This is not the case in Quint, because every single girl is given major amounts of well-needed character development that makes them feel like real, likable people. Well, only four of them are actually likable, but... <laughs> doesn't count. <laughs> he straight up just walks away after. Take the character of Nino, for example. Easily the worst girl of the earlier chapters. She was an asshole to the other sisters, an even bigger asshole to Futuro, and arrogant as all hell. The reason being is that she wanted all the sisters to be closer, and she saw Futuro as an unwanted third party that was breaking them apart, and resented the girls for starting to welcome him. But that all started to change after a certain scene happened, <laughs> which began the process of making her open her eyes to how much of an insufferable she was being. After this scene, she'd become a bit mellower towards Futuro, before eventually falling for him later down the line. However, her falling in love with him only happens after many more character-building moments down the line, and that's why Quint is so special. There is a clear justification for why the girls do or don't like Futuro. They don't start loving him for no reason. He wins over their hearts in believable and understandable ways, over the course of a lot of chapters. Now. This is only possible because the girls weren't the only ones to undergo development in the manga. Because in stark contrast to most other harem manga, the main character, Futuro, is actually a character, and not some copy and paste ballless clone pretending to be a man. Futuro was forced into helping the girls at the beginning of the manga because of his financial situation, and it really shows. He doesn't pursue the girls at the beginning, not that strange for a harem manga, but where it differs is that it's not because he's clueless. But it's because of the fact that he just straight up does not like them at all in the beginning. It really does feel like he's forced into the situation in the beginning and is only putting up with it because he needs the money. Thankfully though, as Fudro becomes closer to the girls he's tutoring, he grows to understand them and like them as people. It was obvious that Fudro would come to love one of them. It wouldn't be much of a romance manga if he didn't. But where Quint really shines is displaying the way his feelings for them grow over the course of the manga and vice versa for the girls, until around the halfway point. This is where the manga transforms into a battle between the girls to win Futuro's heart. The battle for Futuro's heart is where a good majority of people really fell in love with Quint. That's because it felt like the winner could be any of the girls. Each one of them had been developed enough and had been given enough of a connection to Futuro to feel like a viable option in the ensuing waifu war. Yes. No matter where you fell on the quintessential quintuplets political compass, you had a chance to obtain happiness. Maybe you were a Yotsuba communist, a kind and helpful girl who would probably let anyone do it with her as long as they asked nicely. Or maybe you were a Nino Nazi who held the belief that any other girl was just a terrible choice for Fudero on every single level, and that you had to make this very, very clear in every single discussion about Quint. But hey, even if she did lose, at least you would find solace in the fact that any other girl Fudero slept with would mysteriously bleed twice. Or perhaps you were an Itsuki Ancap. Honestly, she didn't fit with this joke. But uh, she's cute, she eats hamburger, and she goes through a pretty interesting character arc of learning to be herself and not trying to be like her mother. Good pick overall. Or maybe you were an Ichika Anarchist. Your motives are beyond human comprehension. You have no chance of winning, and you know that. Why do you even still read this manga? Not even you know the answer. You lost all of your reason long ago. Or lastly, you could be a Miku centrist. You took the safe option, the most generic, vanilla girl there was. You probably like unsalted crackers and seasonal isekai anime. Do you have a functioning brain? Probably but it's not like it's getting much use. Along with giving diverse, unique, and equally valid options for the best girl, Neki also kept you on your toes with constant twists, 
and turns and surprise advances from some of the girls, which work to keep it interesting all throughout. With this much buildup behind it, we all expected the ending to deliver and give us an arc that would be the culmination of all the growing emotions between the characters throughout the manga. An ending that would satisfyingly choose the best girl for Futuro. Did Negi deliver? Well, he definitely delivered something. That something being the rotting corpse of his once great series. God, that was edgy. There is so much wrong with this final arc. For starters, the pace of the story had already been slowing down for a while before the school festival, so I don't see why Negi would think it would be a good idea to make things even slower by showing us every character's perspective on the school fair. There wasn't enough happening during that school fair to justify showing it from six separate perspectives. This worked during the last exam arc because we were still getting to know the characters, so all the different perspectives being shown served as interesting insight into how they think. Plus, the last exam arc was a lot shorter, and was building up to one of the best moments in the series, so that helps. Meanwhile, the last festival arc is longer, has less going on, and is using up valuable chapters that could be used to justify the choice Futuro makes at the end of the arc. To be fair, the first two, arguably three, sides were fairly entertaining, but they still managed to come off as rushed. Meanwhile, Yotsuba's side was boring and didn't really add anything to the story or her character. And then there's Itsuki's side. Oh boy. Itsuki's side starts off with her deciding to spend the school festival studying, instead of going off and having fun. First day of the festival, she goes to a prep school. While at this prep school, she meets the guest instructor for the day. He'll be important later. She studies at school the next day, and it turns out that the instructor from yesterday is also at the school, just hanging around and enjoying the school fair. He sees her studying and compliments her on her academic stoicness, before revealing that he was the Quince mother's homeroom teacher, and says that Itsuki is the spitting image of her mother when she was young, and also tells Itsuki that she should stop trying to be like her mother. Itsuki then gets flustered and runs off. Fast forward a day, and Itsuki is stopped by the same man once again. This time, he has something he needs to tell her. That thing being that he is, in fact, the biological father of the quintuplets. Remember that there was no mention of him before this point. No, Santa Claus over here just reaches out to the quintuplets out of nowhere and declares himself the biological father. And then right after he comes out of nowhere, he's gone two chapters later. Something as monumental as the quint's biological father was used as a throwaway plot point in order to hastily conclude Itsuki's arc. It felt almost as if Nagi just wasn't trying anymore. Like, he needed an excuse to resolve Itsuki's character arc before the end of the manga, and decided on using the biological father without thinking about it too much. It's like someone baked a cake. They went to the store and bought all the ingredients, they mixed them all together and put it in the oven for the perfect amount of time. And then, when it came to frosting it, they just smeared the cake with shit. They just completely coated the thing. Itsuki's arc is just like this cake. Because at the end, all I was left with was a sense of disappointment and a bad taste in my mouth. Unfortunately, however, this isn't the only major issue with the ending. Because there is also the issue of who Futuro chose at the end of the manga, Yotsuba. Before you go assuming anything, I wasn't upset about Yotsuba winning because I liked another girl more. Even if I did. No. The issue I have with Yotsuba winning is that it happened way too early. And to understand why that is, we have to talk about who I think is best girl, that being Nino. Like a good majority of people, I really didn't like Nino at the beginning of the manga. But because of the development she went through that I stated earlier in the video, she went from being my least favorite girl to my most favorite. And I'm pretty stubborn when it comes to my opinions on characters. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because unlike Nino, Yotsuba was far less developed come the end of the manga. For a good majority of Quint, Yotsuba served as somewhat of a gag character because of the fact that she was literally brain dead. It wasn't until around the halfway point that she started to get some development, such as the reason for why she was so willing to help others. The reason being that Yotsuba caused all the other Quints to be transferred after failing an exam, which made her feel like a nuisance, so she helped people to make herself feel like she had a purpose. But that was about the only development she got, as usually the focus of the manga was placed on the other girls and their arcs. It wasn't until the end of the manga that her arc of gaining confidence in herself was resolved. Even then, it just 
didn't feel right. She just talked with the girls for a couple chapters and then was a-okay. The reason for why Fudaro chose her also just makes very little sense. He used very broad terms the whole time that could have been applied to any of the girls, and didn't really explain what separated Yotsuba from the rest of the quints. Okay, pause for a second. So, I was kind of being a big old fucking idiot when I wrote this, so let me clarify something real quick. Fudaro does have a reason for picking Yotsuba. That reason was that her positive attitude and ability to give everything her all, no matter how difficult the challenges ahead of her were, was able to inspire Fudaro to do the same. She was the reason he didn't collapse long ago to quote him directly. But, this doesn't change the fact that this aspect of their relationship was barely explored throughout the manga, leading to the same end result of it feeling like Fudaro could have picked any of the girls at the end of the manga. Alright, back, uh, back to the video, yeah. Fudaro's vague reasoning for picking Yotsuba had the consequence of making it feel like the winner was almost picked at random, and that the manga ended before it probably should have. Add this on to the disaster that was the introduction of the biological father, and you get an ending that ended up feeling like one big, unfunny joke. And now, for the epilogue, or rather, the punchline for this video. The best harem romance manga of the last decade, that was praised for its fun and well-developed characters, as well as its engaging story that left hints for who might win all throughout, which led to so many fan theories online, as well as having some pretty cute and amazing art, ended by rushing its character arcs to unsatisfying resolutions and picking a girl with little to no explanation or bearing to the hints laid down previously in the manga. All the while, the quality of the art had been steadily declining for many chapters. All of this came together to create what I felt to be one of the most disappointing endings to a manga I've ever read. There are probably reasons as to why the manga declined in the way that it did. Lack of motivation and the birth of Negi's child taking his focus away from the manga and onto the responsibilities that come with being a father are the two biggest culprits. But that doesn't mean the ending didn't hurt any less. Quintessential quintuplets meant a lot to me. All the interesting characters, the genuinely funny humor, and just as genuine heartfelt serious moments, all the fun discussion online, as well as all the great doujinshi. Nino, even Ichika was fun to make fun of. All of this is what made Quintessential Quintuplets so special. It's what made it into the manga that got me into reading manga in the first place. It's even the only manga I actually own physically. So, seeing it end the way that it did left me feeling sad. Not angry, just sad and confused at how something I love could be ruined in the blink of an eye. I mean, if a good majority of your fanbase thinks that some twist is just around the corner after your main character has chosen his girl, then you must not have ended your manga very well. But hey, maybe I'm just a little crybaby searching for reasons to hate the manga just because my favorite character didn't win. I mean, from what I've seen, some people were pretty happy with the way it ended. I just wish I could have been one of them. <laughs>